Hello again everyone, this is Steve D of the YYT and I've got another deck tech talk for you today. Today, something a little bit spicy, it is Fire Lightning Marsh Ritz. Marsh, and by extension Ritz, are the most powerful cards, arguably, in the entire game at the moment. I think that practically every deck is either playing these or playing to beat these, and the reason is uh, Marsh is 5 CP, usually or sometimes can cost 3 CP, and when 3 CP represents two bodies on your field, one of which is 8k, which has haste, which is going to refund you 3 CP every time it attacks, there just hasn't been an aggressive, and yet at the same time, relatively mid-rangey and capable of covering itself with summons combination like this in, in the game to date. And uh, practically every deck is either playing this or really needs to tone up its removal to be resilient to an 8k beat stick that gives you 3 free CP every single turn. This combination can be played in practically any cover combination, and I've tried Fire Water, I've tried Mono Fire, I think Mono Fire was, uh, was kind of the first one publicised, and then uh, Chris Matiski over in Australia, who's really been flying the flag for uh, innovation this opus, uh, had got the Fire Earth version that was everywhere in the last Card Cavern Cup, and uh, the TCG League that's run over the last few months as well. My personal favourite combination of colours or elements uh, to play these in is Fire Lightning actually, and that's because, well, there's a few factors there. In Lightning, we also get to play Nyx and Libertus as another really strong combination that came out in Opus 11. Nyx and Libertus, much, uh, w w something that Marsh and Ritz really appreciate is these guys can find lethal in really convoluted ways and uh, even on boards where your opponent has got a ton of action going on being able to play Nyx and break one of your opponent's forwards and dull something else or, or, or give Nyx haste is just so difficult for your opponent to understand or predict when they are ahead enough and it kind of makes your opponents hold back a little bit out of fear and out of respect for what Nyx might be able to do. Another thing, uh, in, in my local area, there's been a lot of Martian Ritz. Actually, we've been talking about banning Martian Ritz on a local basis just because they've been that oppressive. But uh, in the event that we don't ban Martian Ritz uh, locally, uh, I think that being able to play 2CP Ramu, this is a card that looked really cool initially, but, uh, but never really got too many legs in Opus 10. Uh, Ramu deals 8,000 damage to a forward that entered the field this turn. The idea here is that in areas that are rife with Marsh and Ritz mirror matches, you can attack with your Ritz, get back your three backups, and then when your opponent goes for Marsh and Ritz, you can use the Ramu to kill whichever one of those you feel uh, you feel sensible. You could either kill the Marsh, and, and that means Ritz will usually lose her haste, or uh, just kill the Ritz and actually deal with the problem there and then, which uh, I think is probably the smarter move. The core of the Marsh Ritz combo is pretty much the same in most of these decks. I'm playing two copies of Mont Blanc and three copies of Lilty. Lilty will flip over cards from your deck until you find an Ice or a Wind card. Uh, in this case, there is only Ritz as a Wind card for us to then discard to play a Marsh. Uh, be careful in Kadash filled rooms of discarding your Ritz is too early. So uh, I think I think that most people are playing either three Mont Blanc and two Lilty or two Mont Blanc three Lilty. If you've got the room, play three three by all means. But I feel like name diversity can become a little bit of a an issue in that case. We've got six 2CP backups, all of whom happen to be FFTA, and if you've got enough FFTA characters in the field, then Marsh costs three instead of five, which which is completely ridiculous. I, I, I think that uh, if I could change the past, I would make Marsh cost seven and cost five, maybe, if you've got enough characters out on the field. So we've got Black Mage, who can recur fire summons. More on those in a little bit. And we've got Gadgeteer as well. Really cute little noogle from uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. Apologies, let me just slide that across there so that you can see the Black Mage I mean. It's the one from Opus 8. So uh, Gadgeteer can uh, remove himself from the game and one of your other backups in order to play a different backup from your break zone. There is a small toolbox of four cost characters. Unfortunately, we don't have any really good uh, 5 CP backups to play in the Fire or Lightning combination. Lulu is not very good. Latov uh, has too many dependencies. Uh, stuff like that, you know. Uh, there's a couple of standard units as well, but uh, really Really, being able to occasionally turn uh, a 2CP and a 2CP into one of our powerful 4CPs is quite nice, and uh, the rest of the time I just like the fact that it's a lightning backup that makes our marsh cheaper. Let's skip ahead to our summon so that we can understand why Black Mage is here. I think that Ifrit uh, is uh, rather similar to Ramu. It's less efficient than Ramu when you're just trying to kill a forward, but the fact that this deck has got quite a few powerhouse fire forwards, we really appreciate the ability to buff them uh, field-wise, and this being a tempo and aggressive deck, we appreciate Belias as well for being able to attack into pretty much anything our opponent claims they can use as a blocker. Initially, I was playing some copies of Opus 8 Legend Cloud in here as well, but uh, it's very difficult to find a deck that is not improved by the presence of Kadaj if you don't have a really good reason to not be running Kadaj as your light and dark character of choice. And then we get to another little bit of spice uh, that is afforded to us on account of playing Lightning. We've got Maya. 
and uh, Maya has got the wonderful virtue of being kind of like Kadaj for being able to dull down some of our opponent's board. Uh, each turn as you enter combat you can choose a few different effects, first strike and, uh, and 1k is one of them, uh, being able to haste one of our Mobius forwards is quite powerful as well, but as a consolation prize being able to dull one of your opponent's forwards is exceptionally powerful, especially in conjunction with Kadaj, it means your opponent's just not going to have a field most of the time and uh, it lets you play as aggressively as you like really and, and use your uh, Ritz CP to just flood the board a little bit more. Braska's final Aeon makes it into this deck just because it's a really powerful card. It almost always will extract more than 7 CP worth of value from your opponent when they spend removal trying to kill it, and then it also kills something else on the way out. Uh, but uh, it's a Mobius forward as well, so uh, Maya is actually capable of giving Braska's final Aeon haste, which is kind of cool. When you're playing Lightning, you need an exceptionally good reason to not be playing Illua, uh, and uh, I couldn't think of an exceptionally good reason. So we're playing Illua here as well, as another nice aggressive forward that's very difficult to remove, much like Kadaj, much like uh, BFA and Marsh and Ritz. The efficiency of this deck is just uh, is pretty extreme, and uh, occasionally her shield special comes in really useful as well. We're playing somewhere in a, a, a magic number region of summons, so uh, Terra is usually going to have a summon in the break zone to make her cost pseudo 2 CP, and I think that making Ifrit and Ramu as well do uh, effectively 10k damage when Terra gets her little bit of ping off as well is really nice. And lastly, let's go down to the backups. Whenever Illua is good, Set of Clan Gully is probably playable for finding those specials uh, or, or just a, a nice way to flesh out your, your dead CP turns. Of note, I think that 3 CP backups and 3 CP forwards are, are really important in this deck because Ritz is going to refund that much CP for you every turn. Uh, if you get the sort of nut draw where you go a couple of backups turn 1, another backup and then Marsh Ritz on turn 3, being able to play another 3 CP card that same turn just feels backbreakingly strong. To recur our powerful toolboxy cards as and when needed, we've got a couple of copies of Crow. Uh, sorry, I'll move her out of the light. Crow as well uh, has got nice synergy with Nyx when you can pop one of your, your own King's Glaives in order to uh, get one of his effects off. And then lastly, we've got uh, a couple of 4 CP cards that we can occasionally toolbox out with Gadgeteer, but they stand up just fine on their own merit as well. One copy of Seymour, again very good in mirror matches for being able to kill a Ritz or uh, being able to get a pesky Yustola off the field who would be resilient to your Ifrits. And we've got one copy of Lid, who I occasionally interchange for Sage. Sage is a little bit more flexible for being able to get back any one of your forwards, whereas Lid is only uh, lightning characters uh, on the bright side. Lid has a cooler name and occasionally can push for lethals by doing 8k to one of your opponent's active guys and, uh, and that is uh, backbreakingly strong in conjunction with Kadash and Mayor from time to time. So that is the deck. Uh, I would be really pleased to hear any success stories of you playing with this uh, aggressive uh, twist on a meta classic. Thank you very much for listening and watching. As always, the deck list is in the description and please tune in next time for more Deck Tech Talks.